Hey, Thomas Chang here for Fun Tech Innovation. Welcome back again to another tutorial session. Today, we're going to be talking about the NXQ on screen right there. However, we're going to use the Quick Start Guide. Probably haven't seen that before, right? A lot of good information is actually in the Quick Start Guide, often time overlooked. So let's take a close look at them today. First thing first, take a look at what's at inside the box. So package contents. Within the gift box, the brown box, you open that, you will see a travel box. Within the travel box, it has the queue and all the peripherals. So we provide all the peripherals for free. How wonderful is that? The user have access to all the peripheral with zero dollar extra. So the camera is there and the peripheral, the cables, the wooden base and the poles, right? To mount the cameras and the remote control with AAA battery. Quick start guide is also in there, the one that we are reading. And look at the cube itself. So many details here to talk about. Well, the camera lens, one, two, three, four. Underneath, number two, there's an IR receiver over there, the IR receivers. And of course, that is the USB-C port that you connect the USB cable to. And that is the tripod hole. So it's a standard quarter inch tripod screw hole. You can connect to a regular tripod that you find on the Amazon or e-commerce store, or you can use that to connect to the wooden base that we ship. Number five are the microphones. We have two of them, omnidirectional. They are sitting at the opposite side of the cube. So they are diagonally apart from each other. And very importantly, there is a white mark front arrow right there that indicates that this is actually the front side of the cube, okay? So you should point this front side toward the front of the meeting room or toward wherever that presenter is gonna be, such as the whiteboard. Remember, if you point that white arrow to the front side, it's gonna make your job a lot easier when you're using other features at the end. And there is a mode switch right there. You can switch through the AI modes or you can switch through the manual mode. We have two modes, AI and manual, two main category. Basically what's happening is, if you are long pressing this mode switch button, long press, if you long press, you're actually gonna switch between the AI, the AI and the manual mode. If you just short click it or short press it, you are cycling through within the AI modes or within the manual modes. Long press gets you to go from AI to manual or manual to AI. Single press allows you to cycle through within the AI or within the manual, okay? Uh, obviously, the camera off button, number eight, or the microphone off button, the moment you press it, the red LED is gonna turn on to tell you to indicate that it's actually turned off. So you know that this is uh, the status of the camera. And of course, the LED indicator, there's a ring light right there going across on the top, very elegant and beautiful. So you connect the cube, it will basically start blinking. And then if you select cube as a video source, it will remain white, remain lit during a video call session. And this is the wooden table stand. So we ship with three poles, one, two, three. So maximum one, two, three, you're gonna have a 42 centimeter height, okay? And normally, uh, in normal meeting table circumstances, if you connect just one and two, you're gonna give it 30 centimeter height, which is probably good enough for you to use. Why? Because uh, we have measured it out. For most tables and chairs configurations, 30 centimeter is tall enough to see past the laptop, but not too tall to block the face. Uh, if your preference is having a 30 centimeter connect two poles, if you actually like it to be taller, because for uh, the case that you may be taller, or maybe your table is shorter or the chair is taller, depending on the height uh, configurations, you can choose and customize how tall you want your cube to be. So with two poles, 30 centimeter, with three poles, 42 centimeter. And if you look at the poles, you'll see that there is a male to female, or male to male. So this is actually number 12, which is the male to male. So you can connect it to the base and the other side to another pole. 
but it doesn't really matter because we have designed this to be a foolproof. Even if you first connect the male to female uh, to the pole, uh, to the base, you can actually still do the male to male later. So this is actually um, no brainer. So foolproof. Um, try that out. Customize the height of your wooden base. All right. That is the remote control that you're seeing right there. Um, quickly going through them. The camera off and mic mute is the same as the one that's on the camera and the status actually will be synced. So if you press the microphone off on the cam uh, on the remote, you will see that turn off on the camera as well. So that the status is synced. And here we have all the arrow buttons that you can use to choose and navigate within setting. But at the same time, if you are in the manual mode, you can use that as a EPDZ, sorry, EPT, pan and tilt uh, feature. So you can look up, tilt down, uh, pan left, pan right. And this is the AI mode button. Press that, you'll go into the AI mode or the AI setting. Uh, manual mode, press that, you will go to, into the manual mode. Press that again, you'll go into a manual setting. So if you're in the AI mode already and you press the AI uh, button, you'll go into the setting. If you're in the manual mode and you press the manual uh, button again, you'll go into the setting. So basically, you double click. Uh, if you are switching back and forth between AI and manual, you just basically press the other side and you switch to the other side. There is a switch button allowing you to switch between within the mode. So if I'm in the AI mode and I press that switch button or toggle button, it will allow you to switch modes. So if I'm in AI mode and I switch, I will switch within the AI. Okay. If I'm in the manual mode and I switch, I'll switch within the manual. So that's how it works. Now, obviously, general setting for you to access language, uh, uh, frequency changes, uh, and then get into ignore zone. And here is close to setting. Okay, so that's the remote. And here uh, we are going to be talking about the main, uh, most important thing. So let's see here real quickly. All right. The most important thing here is to understand the AI performance. So Cube is a 360 degree camera. So it sees a big area, right, in all directions. So when he sees 160 degree viewing area, everyone appear very small because it's seeing a big round circle, right? So if you're 2.5 meter away, if the person is 2.5 meter away, it appears very small in the eye of the Cube. So it's optimal distance is within 2.5 meters. And then the number, recommended number of people is 12 or less. So 2.5 meters, 12 or less. So obviously good for medium size, uh, meeting room or less, right? If you put cube on the table, and this is a 2.5 radius, it's actually quite a big circle. It fits into a five meter room, right? So this is a five meter room or a four meter room, this will cover that entire room if you are putting it in the middle of the table. And there's a display ignore. So what does that mean? A lot of the competition products, they are using audio detections. Uh, we are not using audio detection, we're using visual AI. So the, our AI chip actually recognizes a person is in the room. However, sometimes there is a display, or well, oftentimes there's a display in the meeting room and the person who joined uh, the video conference call from remote will show up on that big display. When that happens, our AI, we need to train the AI to ignore the person in the display. Um, however, if we have somebody put their laptop in between the display and the cube, sometimes that's going to create a problem because the, the cube's AI is now not sure if that's actually a display or not because the shape has been changed. So um, just to know if you are seeing the displays, a uh, person from the display being recognized by the AI, our AI as a person in the room and start to show up in the AI mode, uh, kindly take a look around and see if there's object blocking the cube in between the display and the cube, okay? All right, so here are some AI modes. Dedicated focus means every person in the room is going to get their own dedicated focus shot. 
So let's say there are one, two, three, four people in the on, nearby the, uh, on the table nearby cube. Each person is going to get their own dedicated focus shot in a box. So they're going to get their own box. Most of the competitions are up to four in terms of boxes. We are able to support up to eight. Okay. And if you have two people sitting very closely together, they are going to get merged into the same box. Again, 12 people or less at the most limited box. So if you have more than uh, eight people, they will, the ninth person, depending on which person he is sitting closer to, might get merged into the same box. Also note here, the dedicated focus mode is actually the default mode. Whenever the camera turns on, you will be in dedicated focus. So this is actually the default mode whenever the camera is turned on. You, recon you reconnect it again or you turn it on, you turn it off and you turn it on again in the video sessions. It's always going to be in the dedicated focus. So that's where you start with. And then there's AI auto framing. Auto framing basically look for the shortest frame um, to frame the people, the shortest distance to frame the people. So the AI, for example, in this setting, sees that there are one, two, three person in the room. No one is there and actually frames the shortest distance. So in this case is the right side. So it basically removed the left side and show the right side. That's called auto framing. And stage mode, basically remember you had that arrow button to point the front. So the camera actually knows that this is the front of the camera and that's called stage. At the back is the audience camera. So it's shown here a little narrower strip and the stage area is going to be shown there more real estate emphasizing on the presenter so the presenter is going to be shown there at 90 degree field of view right there and as that person moves left or right within the stage area which is the front 180 the ai is going to track that person always include that person in the shot that's the ai mode and Stage actually can work with more than one person in the front. However, the best optimal performance and result is with one person. And then we go into the manual mode. So we just finished the AIs. Now we're going to manual. Manual conversation basically means there are two sides to the cube, left side, right side. How does cube know which one is left or right? That front arrow button pointing is the front. And then that's going to be my right side or left side. So two different sides are going to be shown, and that's how you have a conversation. 180 degree view slips. Uh, 360 degree to see the entire panoramic view, or you can choose to 1, 270, 180, 120, or 90 degree, and you can use that remote control to e-pan, change the directions. So basically, you can go look at here or look at there or anywhere just by using that uh, e-pan. So it goes. You can basically customize your view angle and customize your directions. So here are a quick summary of what you can do in the manual mode. So these are the available modes. You can always pan left or right. However, for tilting up and down, it's only available in the conversation mode and also 120 and 90 degree because if you are in 360, 270, or 180, you are already seeing the entire vertical resolutions, so there's not nowhere to look up or down. Okay, so only available to look up and down in the conversation mode, 120 and 90 degree. And then we cover some best setup example. So this will help you to understand how to use Cube, which setting to use. So let's say if you have a room like this, room type is small or medium. And then the table type could be round or it could be rectangular. Participant, about eight or less. And they are sitting scattered, all right? And their eyes are more on each other than having a, looking at the display. So they're having a discussion, more like. So they're having a you know, talk among themselves. So in that case, we want to use the dedicated focus mode, a dedicated focus shot, so that it can capture the people like that everybody get their own boxes and you want to put the camera in the middle in the middle of that table to capture everyone which is our scat sitting scattered around the camera and then if you have a long shape 
meeting room, such as the one that's number two right there. And you want to be able to capture them like this, meaning that they are basically sitting, they are looking at a display. So this is a medium to large size rectangular long table. They are sitting vertically to the display. They are sitting vertically away from the display. And they are looking at the display more because somebody is doing a presentation or showing a PowerPoint or somebody on the other side is talking. Then what you want to do is to capture a group shot like this. And you want to put the camera toward the front of the table right there so that you can capture that group shot. And you can use the AI auto framing mode or you can actually use the manual 120 degree. So both will work. Okay, you can use the AI auto framing. And you, or you can use the manual. Notice these people are outside the 2.5 meter detector range. That's why if you turn on the dedicated focus, camera is gonna have a hard time seeing these people because they are not within the range. However, if you actually use the auto framing mode, this guy and that guy is actually the left frame, left side or right side of the group. So they will be seen because they are within 2.5 meter, right? So this way is actually the best to use AI auto framing. If you use dedicated focus, then these group of people will run a risk not being be able to seen by the AI or you will be seen, but sometimes not seen. So you'll see that jumpy, uh, jumpy video. We don't want that. So let's use the group, um, group photo or fix uh, using the manual mode. Okay. Number three, let's say we have a long table, but instead of the table vertically away from the display, it's actually horizontal. So this is horizontal from the display. As you can see, it's sideways now. And people are sitting in this kind of orientations looking at the display. What you want to do is that in this medium to large size room with eight to 12 participants, we want to practice capturing a group shot like that, so you see this. And in order to see that, you want to be able to place the camera toward the front of the table, a little bit toward the front of the table. That's where people are looking at. They're looking at the front of the table onto the display. So we do that and then, however, we don't use the AI auto framing. Again, we do not use the AI auto framing because the left side, uh, the right side, sorry, left side, and the right side of the people, the two people are actually outside of 2.5 meters. This is a big room, right? So when they're outside of that detector range, it's risky to use the AI mode as a detection method. So instead, we don't use the AI mode and we use what? We use the manual mode. So we choose the 180 degree shot in this setting to better capture that view, okay? And there is a medium to large size Number four, medium large size room where there's a presenter now. So the difference between three and four is that there is a presenter in number four. So when that's the case, we can actually go stage. Okay, somebody will say, oh, wait a minute. Isn't uh, this person here and that person there outside a 2.5 meter range? Well, that's okay because they are in the audience section. And if they're in the audience sections, AI is not gonna track them. So they are just captured 180 degree overview. So they will be shown there always. And the only person that needs to uh, be tracked is the person in the front. So if we place the camera in the front closer to the presenter, we will be able to capture that presenter in the 2.5 uh, meter radius while keeping a 180 degree overview on the audience. So that's called stage mode. And of course we put the camera toward the front of the table because everyone is looking in the front. So we put the camera toward the front. And then now the room is getting bigger and bigger in number five. When we have a large size um, boardroom, there's a rectangular long table. We often see that, right? In, in a large meeting room, people will be sitting on the opposite side. So there obviously there are 14 people here. Uh, basically the drawing says that there are eight, oh, 16. 16 people here, more than 12, not suitable for AI. So let's use the manual mode. But which manual mode do we use? Well, they are looking at each other more, having a front face-to-face uh, -face conversation. So when that's the case, what we want to do is use the conversation mode to capture that conversations. 
when they are looking at each other and we want to place the cube in the middle of that table so it can better capture that uh, discussions among two groups. Okay, so that's conversations. And that covers the several uh, setting scenarios and those are typical example for you to take a look at and obviously you can always customize. You can move the table, uh, the, the cube closer to the people, away from the people and then take a look at the distance, the number of people, how close or how far away are they sitting from each other. Then you can choose the mode accordingly. Okay, so before I move further, just want to highlight one more thing. Within the dedicated focus mode in which they are going to merge the boxes, this one right there, uh, they're going to merge it if there are people sitting within 30 degree of the cube. So cube is going to look at the entire room in a circle and dissect it into 12 sections. So if two people are actually sitting within 30 degree, they will get merged into one box. Okay, so that is the magic number. Because you're the technical expert, if you're actually reading these videos, I'm sharing this with you. Okay. We are almost finished there. Very importantly, there's a ignore zone setting within the general setting. If you click the general setting, you'll get into ignore zone right away. What is ignore zone? Ignore zone is basically telling the AI there's a zone here. I don't want you to um, show to the opposite side. So the AI you're not supposed to work showcase any person that you detect over there. In the case, if we set a ignore zone in this setting, there are four people in the room, one, two, three, four. I want to ignore number three, and then I ignore number three, and I go into a dedicated focus mode. Original shot is this, one, two, three, four, before the ignore zone. After the ignore zone, just one, two, and four, because number three is now ignored. And we go into auto framing. We, remember, we block number three, right? And then we go into auto framing, if, if that number three is there, or we are ignoring a TV or display, basically what's happening is the auto framing will not show this ignore area. And it will show the frame cutting on the opposite side of the ignore area. So, okay. So basically any shot here that I, any area here that I ignore is telling the AI auto framing to show the three people by framing on the opposite side. So that's the result. Same time, you can always set a certain ignore zone at the stage mode, just in case people are walking in and out of the door. And that could be the front door by the meeting room, by the classroom. I want to ignore that. I can actually do that as well. Okay. Um, There is a very important last piece I want to share with you. We have the settings. So if we press this again, we get into the AI mode setting. If I double click, right? If I get in here, I'll get access to on-screen display. So you will see images like that. On-screen display is for you to actually access one more feature called tracking and track once. So if you see this, let me enlarge that for you. It's available in all of the AI setting. In all of the AI setting, it's available. So what does that do? Basically, if you turn that from tracking to not tracking, to only track once, you're telling the AI, hey, I don't want you to constantly be tracking. I want you to take a shot or track one time and then just keep the shot still so that you may have access to a very still image. So when do you need to use that? Sometimes people are standing up, leaving the room, you know, creating jumpy video because they need to pick up phone calls and whatever. You can actually go in there and then set the AI from tracking to only track once, then you can have a still video. You don't have a jumpy video. So that's a very important feature. And then you can always press OK to rescan uh, the OK button that's in the remote control, OK? And you can have the manual mode setting. So you can press this button twice, and you get into the setting. And within the setting, you will see the OSD that's there. 
giving you step-by-step -step illustrations on what the mode is about and how do you basically line things up. And remember, all the previews are at the bottom right. So even within the AI mode, all the previews is within the bottom right, so you can see exactly what you're doing. And the on-screen display is there for it to show you and explain to you uh, what exactly is happening here. So take the stage mode, for example. It will tell you that, hey, if you're in the stage area, wherever that's in the stage, it's going to be tracked. So this is the stage area. And if you're not in the stage area, you will not be tracked. So these two will be shown there. And that person, number one, is actually over there. So those are the audience. So anyway, the OSD is there to help you access tracking feature once or on tracking. Also, at the same time, it will show you what's available uh, within the setting so you have an easier way to understand. Okay, and that is a conclusion of today's training using the Quick Start Guide. I hope you like what it is and pick up that Quick Start Guide and start practicing so you have a great understanding of how to use the NX Cube. Ask any questions you want, you know how to reach us. Thank you very much. This is Thomas Chang from Fun Tech Innovation. See you at another training.